Potato pancakes don't have to be greasy. They're actually easy to make, especially if you have a food processor. It's a simple recipe. It only takes four ingredients. So we're going to start with potatoes. Two potatoes. I think russets make the best potato pancakes. This is about a pound and a half of russet potatoes. So you're going to peel and chop these, which I've done right here. So there's my peeled and chopped potatoes. And it takes about a quarter cup of onion, which would be about a quarter of an onion this size. So I'll cut that in half and then another quarter. That is about a quarter cup of onion right there. We just dice that up a little bit. All this goes into the food processor. If you don't have a food processor, you have to do it the old fashioned way and grate the potatoes and onions on one of these, which will give you the same thing. It just takes a little longer. But if you have a food processor, you put this stuff in the food processor. And of course, the smaller you chop them, the faster it'll process, but it really takes just about 30 seconds for all this to get processed. Okay, so that's all done now. If you should have a lump or two left, you can just take it out. It doesn't matter, but it looks like it's pretty smooth. So this is now going to go into a bowl, but you put it through a strainer. You will need a very fine mesh strainer like this. So you put it over a bowl and you dump that potato and onion mixture into the strainer. Okay? Get as much. I don't, I don't think I have any lumps. I thought I did, but I don't. But like I said, don't worry if you do. You just pull the lumps out. Okay. Now, this has to sit in the strainer for five minutes, and after five minutes, I'll tell you why. Okay, it's been about five minutes, and the reason I do this is because you want a thick batter, and we want to get rid of some of the moisture from the potato, but not the starch, which has separated, as you'll see. So you take this away for a minute, and let me show you this. See this moisture? This is all stuff you're going to pour away into the sink, but look what's left. What's left is that potato starch. And that's what you want to keep and put it back, put it in, keep it in your mixture. So that's the reason we do that. It gives us a nice, nice thick batter. So that goes in the sink. Keep the starch, and to that starch, we add the potato and the onions, which is a nice, dry, thick mixture here. And then the rest of the ingredients get added in, which is only one tablespoon of flour. I use whole wheat flour. You can use all purpose, but it's only one tablespoon of flour. That's all it needs. One egg half a teaspoon of salt, and pepper to taste. That's it right there. I told you it was simple. So you mix this up, and you'll see by losing all of that water from the potato, we get a nice thick potato pancake batter, and it's ready to go. That's all it takes. All right, now I'm going to preheat my pan, and we're going to start uh, cooking up these pancakes. I'll be right back. I'm going to use a total of maybe three teaspoons of oil to make all the potato pancakes, starting with about a half a teaspoon. I'm using canola. You can use the oil that you like, although olive oil uh, is not good for very high heat, so uh, that's why I use canola. You kind of spread that oil around. If the pan is hot like this, uh, the oil should spread pretty easily, but you want to cover as much of the pan as possible. So. If you're not sure if the pan's hot enough, you take a little bit of water, sprinkle it. You hear the sizzle, that means it's hot enough. So here's the batter, give it a quick stir. And now we're going to put about, I don't know, maybe like a quarter cup of batter for each one. Listen to that there. Flatten it down just a little bit, the spoon. And I think I can usually get four on here. One, two. See how nice and thick that is? That's because we got rid of the... Uh, that extra uh, liquid, and it's not spreading too much, because you want it to be kind of nice and thick. Can I do it? Yeah, get another one on here. They don't spread too much, so kind of however you do them. There. Now, it's about three minutes per side. You just let them sit like that, and uh, then we're going to flip them over, and then we're going to drain them on a paper towel, and that's how easy it is. Okay, so after about two and a half, three minutes, you can start peeking underneath to see if they're ready to flip, and let's take a close look here. Ah, perfect. Now you got to just trust yourself. Just get under there and flip. Look at that. Wow. Beautiful. Get under it. You can kind of peek if you like. Get under it. Flip it over. This one's tougher. I put them so close together here. Get under it. And flip. Under <laughs> and flip. 
Now, if you're unsure, obviously you could just do three at a time. You know, I was trying to show off, but the fourth one got, it is a little bit small, but that's about how they'll look like. And then three more minutes on the other side and they're done. Okay, it's been about three minutes on the other side and see how, look at them on the other side. There they are. I'll just flip it over. How about that? Look at that. That's it. There's the bottom. There's the top. There'll be hardly any grease at all on the paper, but I just do that out of habit. So now we'll put the second group in, and now it's time to put a little more oil in. And about like, a, I, I think it's only about a half teaspoon every time I put the next batch in. About a half a teaspoon. That's why I like the cast iron, because it stays really hot. This is about a medium, between medium and medium high. If you don't have cast iron, uh, you can certainly use any other kind of pan. But uh, this one just is really, really good. All right. So here's some more. Should I try four again? Okay, I'm going to try four. Maybe I'll make them a little smaller. Here's one. Flatten them down just a little. There's two. You can almost make them any shape that you want. See, that one's going to be crooked. Three. And four. A little bit of flattening. If they're touching a little bit, no problem, you just separate them. So I'll just keep going and then uh, I'll show you how many I've made when we're all done. Now, if your pan, depending on your pan, if, you, if it's not browning enough for you, you can, when you turn them over, you can add just a little bit more oil. Sometimes I just do it uh, along the side of the pan like that and then just kind of tilt it and let the, let the oil run down to get them nice and golden. And you can actually oops, shake the pan a little bit too. So um, that's about it. Another couple minutes on here, and they're all going to be done. And by the way, while you're cooking these, if you want to keep them warm or make a whole batch, make, make a lot more, you can keep them warm in a 200 degree oven on like a, a sheet or something uh, with paper towels, just lined with paper towels, just like this. But let me show you, there is hardly any grease here at all. Here are the first ones I made. You can see that there's a little moisture, but there's no fat because I use so little oil. So you can see why these are much healthier than the ones when I mean, you get them in the restaurant, they're like, they're like deep fried. So now let's talk about how to eat these. I'm Polish. So I grew up having them with sour cream because we have everything with sour cream, but now I use reduced fat sour cream. You can have them with applesauce. Um, my mother used to uh, slice up leftover potato pancakes, mix them in with scrambled eggs for breakfast and they were fantastic. So, um, Potato pancakes are the reason I'm never going to be on a low-carb diet, so I'm going to have some right now. Let's see. One potato, two potato, three potato, four. If you weren't watching, I'd probably have more. 